Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and happy Friday everyone. Today we are going to be, I'm actually redoing a video that I did a couple of years ago now um, just to update it a little bit and to add hopefully a little bit more. We're going to be talking about the favorite, my favorite places to buy fabric and more specifically the favorite the basics that I tend to use from those fabric stores. Um, we're going to be going through that here in just a second. But before I get into that, today is Friday, and today's Love Notions Feature Friday is the Tabitha top. This is such a cute little top. Um, he's got an option for like a woven, like a shirt tail hem that you can add, um, and different collar pieces and stuff that gives you that layered look without actually having to have the bulk of layering, you know, a sweater over a shirt or whatever. Um, I know that Jess is on the, or Jen is on the, um, uh, the channel, the YouTube channel. I was trying to think of as a blog or the channel, but she's done a video on um, repurposing a men's shirt for hers. Um, it's a really fun little top. It was actually drafted at the same time as the Tessa sheath dress, so it has very similar necklines, um, and it, it's just a really beautiful top. So I have not made one yet, but it is on my short list of things to make, and um, again, it is $5 today only. You can use the Tomcat 10 to get an additional 10% off, and uh, yeah, go grab that one. That could be a fun one to do for Christmas gifts for people as well. Um, kind of a big bang for your buck. Um, look like a much more expensive item than it is, and I think it would be um, easy and quick to uh, make one up, you know, for what it is, if that makes sense. <laughs> and you can reuse men's shirts and that sort of thing. Get some thrifting in there. Okay, today we're talking all about fabric. I am, typically I put all of the links down below in my description box. If you don't know where the description box is, right below, if you're watching the video on, it does, you can't get to the description box if you're watching on a TV, but if you're watching on a device or a computer, right below the title of the video, there's like a couple of lines of text. Um, what does this say? On this video, it will say, sign up here for the newsletter, and then it's got a link, and then it says, I will have links to all the fabrics I'm talking about today in my newsletter on Monday evening, is what it's going to say. So that gives it away. <laughs> so if you click the little um, drop down arrow, or sometimes it says show more, my links are going to drop down. And then I think sometimes, depending on your device, you may have to hit another, you know, show more or whatever to get the entire uh, box to drop down. But that, I have so many links that's in that area. And uh, normally I would put links in all of that, but I've decided to make this a little bit more user friendly and uh, a resource that you guys could go to again and again, that I'm gonna be putting it into a PDF and um, I'll be emailing that to my newsletter subscribers on Monday evening. I'm switching my delivery day to Monday evenings, every other Monday evenings, um, so you'll get early access to those week's Tuesday's video, um, as well as some other things. You know, I like to put little freebies in there um, as well. Um, also, if you haven't signed up for the newsletter and you want to do that, you do get a welcome email that includes my wardrobe basics checklist, which are like my TNT patterns, um, the fabrics that I am using for mine and all that kind of stuff, as well as my fabric buying guide, which is just kind of my general rule of thumb of what, when I'm fabric shopping and I don't know what I'm going to make with something, kind of my rule of thumb, it's a little thing you can print out and just stick in your wallet or, or just keep it on your phone, whatever. Um, anyway, those come free with the welcome email if you've not yet signed up for the newsletter. Um, this will be a PDF with clickable links, so my recommendation is not to print it out, but to just save it on your computer uh, so that you can go to it at any time and just see what is it that she said that she likes for cotton spandex jersey, and then you can easily find it there. Um, so yes, definitely head over to the newsletter. If you are having issues, if you're not getting, if you've not signed up and you sign up and you are not um, getting that welcome email, give it about 15 minutes, check your spam, check all your folders. Um, it goes into the promotions folder, I think, if you have a Gmail account. Um, I think it's gone into my spam folder and my Hotmail account before, so just make sure you check all your folders. But if you're still not getting it, um, send me an email at the Whitney at TomcatStitchery.com and I can look at the back end of the newsletter provider and see what's going on. So, um, yeah, definitely get signed up for that. I've got a lot of really, like all the announcements I make on the channel, they go through the newsletter first. Again, I get freebies. Um, there'll be a winter um, capsule wardrobe freebie that'll be going out. Um, probably sometime in the early December. So yeah, it's something fun to, to be a part of. But yes, Monday night, this will be going out with all the links to this video. Now I do have the fabric stop shops that I'm talking about listed in the description box, but as far as the links for the individual fabric substrates that I'm talking about, that will all be in that PDF. Okay, 
For the PDF, I am gonna have things broken down by fabric type. So I'm gonna have a section of, you know, jerseys, ponty knits, because um, I have a few different that I like from um, a couple of different shops. So I'll have it broken down by type of fabric, just for ease of finding what I'm talking about. You know, denims, that kind of thing. But if we're talking about it today, I'm actually gonna go, um, by fabric store. So it all, I'll just have it outlined a little bit different today than I have it outlined um, on the PDF. So if I'm going through this and you're like, well, that's not going to be easy to, <laughs> I'll have to remember which fabric stop she's talking about. No, on the PDF, I'll have it listed by fabric so that you'll easily be able to go through and find what I'm talking about. Just for ease of me talking, because I have some other things I want to say about each shop. So it's just easier for the breakdown of the video. <laughs> Okay, let's get started. So I have eight fabric shops that I typically go to for if I'm looking for basics and also just fabric shopping in general. Um, when I do my capsule wardrobes each season, these are the eight that I'm going to to look for things to fill the holes in my wardrobe. Um, these aren't really in any particular order, although I will say that the first two I'm gonna mention are probably the ones I shop from, they are, they're the ones that I shop from the most, but I'm gonna go through all eight and kind of talk, sorry, my computer's also here and it keeps wanting to go to sleep on me. Um, I'm also gonna be talking about the other fabric shops that I go to, um, cause sometimes those are for more specific things and we'll go through that as well. Okay, so. I'm basically going through solids here because these are the basics. These are my staples. Um, a lot of times I carry these in my stash. Not all the time, but, you know, because some of these I might not use this type of fabric as often. But if I am wanting this type of fabric, this is where I go for that. I will try and pop up pictures of me in these various fabrics as I go along. So um, you can kind of see the garments that I've made with them, um, um, you know, within reason. I <laughs> spent a lot of time screenshotting things put pictures up. Takes a lot longer to edit when that happens, um, which is fine. Okay, so I'm going to start with Minerva. Minerva is a um, fabric store based in the UK. They are all eight of these that I'm going to talk about are small businesses. Um, Minerva is run by a family and it has been run by a family for 20, they're getting ready to celebrate their 25th anniversary. Um, they have a couple people on staff, but it's not a huge corporation by any stretch. They are in the countryside. Uh, so they're not even in like in London, they're in the countryside um, in England and uh, they just have a huge array of fabrics. And I would say when I am shopping for my um, things to fill for my capsules and that sort of thing, I go to them most often only because they've got the biggest selection. Um, but I do have, again, I'll, I have some places that I'll go to for other things. I also have some things that I get at Minerva that I get at other places as well. So it just kind of depends on if I want a one-stop shop or, or kind of how that works. Minerva has um, somewhat recently started their Minerva Core range, which is kind of their staples, things that they can get back more in stock, things that they, um, they've curated pretty intensely, their core range. So I would say um, another thing when you're when you're buying fabric online, because I know that that can be a big issue for a lot of people, and I get it, you like to feel the fabrics, you like to, um, you know, see the drape, like it's much easier to do that in person, but unfortunately the way of the world is going more towards online shopping. And my biggest recommendation to people when they are asking about online shopping is to find some fabric stores like I have that you can trust their quality, where you know absolutely anything that I buy here is gonna be good quality, even if the color is maybe not quite what you thought it was on your computer screen, at least you know it's gonna be really good quality. And I would say with Minerva, they do have a huge stock, and obviously I've not used everything of theirs, but their core range things are all things that you can trust to be really good quality. Um, you know, some of the other stuff may be hit or miss, but their core range, anything that they carry that's designer, such as your art gallery, your atelier um, brunette, your, um, meat milk, your, um, I mean, there's a few, Lady, Lady McElroy, um, Dashwood, you know, there's a few that are some well-known designer names that you can just trust the quality because you know that designer. Um, and the Minerva also has released a new exclusive line of, let's see, they've got it on Chalet, French Terry, and Sweater Knit. Now, why I have not tried the French Terry or the Sweater Knit yet, although I have some French Terry on order, so as soon as that, it's pre-ordered, as soon as it gets here, I'm very excited to share that with you guys, but I will say that their Chalet is excellent quality, and I've used, um, I mean, it's all the same substrate with different prints, uh, but I have used quite a bit of it and washed it, and it's just, it wears really, really well. Um, so that being said, this is, 
you know, with Minerva, that's kind of my thing. And if you're a craft club member, which I think is 20 pounds a year, and right now the, um, the Great British Pound, as I'm filming this on the 10th of November, 2022, the British Pound and the dollar are really close. That has not been the case for quite a while, but they're really close value-wise. Um, but for 20 pounds a year, you get 10% off your order all the time. And then when they do their craft club member days, which is like two or three times a year, you get an additional 10% off everything, so 20% off everything. Um, and you get free shipping over 50 pounds. So um, international. Um, and I also get a lot of questions, you know, they are, uh, they are in the UK if I ever have to pay duties or um, custom charges or anything, I've never had to pay anything extra. So I get free shipping and I personally, I'm in Indiana, the center of the, you know, kind of the middle of the United States, I've never had to pay any kind of duty fee or custom fees for those packages. I know they have that on their website, but they also ship internationally, so other countries might be different. Um, but that's been my experience with Minerva as well. So they're really easy to order from. Usually I get my order within a week after they've shipped it, and they usually ship within one to two business days. So that little caveat there. All right, fabrics that I love as far as basics from Minerva. Their cotton spandex jersey. It's just lovely. <laughs> It washes well, it wears well. I personally like cotton spandex jersey for most of my jersey needs. Um, I have started a little bit of a love affair with cotton modal, which modal is just another, uh, my eyeball just dried out, sorry, another kind of uh, rayon-ish substrate. It is a fiber that has been treated in a similar way to a rayon. Um, you know, your bamboos, all of those have been treated in a similar way to a viscose or rayon. Um, same thing with modal. Um, and it just gives a little bit more drape to the cotton. I just personally, with my body type, I like my jerseys to hold their shape, and cotton spandex jersey does that. Great recovery. Um, again, they wash well, they wear really well, and um, I just really like those for most of, you know, most of my jersey needs. Dresses, um, t-shirts, you know, anything that I'm using with um, jersey. Love that. They also have their luxury viscose spandex um, jersey, which viscose and rayon are interchangeable. They're just different words for different parts of the world. Um, but it is a really good quality viscose jersey. And I use viscose jersey on occasion. There are some patterns that just you need more drape, um, such as the itch to stitch, or um, not itch to stitch, the cashmere at Wexford that is um, a dress that they released. It's one of their club patterns, but it's kind of, you know, it's fitted through the bust and then it's um, kind of trapeze. Then it goes out from there. Well, I don't want anything with a lot of um, structure on that. I wouldn't necessarily, for my body, I would not want a cotton spandex because it would stand out away from my bust line and make me look larger. Whereas a viscose, drapes over the curves and um, you know just wears really really well I used this luxury viscose for my mother on the what you guys haven't seen that yet but on her Wexford dress that I made for her um, so yeah I and some like drape your cardigans I think a viscose spandex does have its place um, just kind of depending on your garment and they have it in a ton of different colors and it's just a really high quality it's not it doesn't pill like a lot of the rayon spandex or viscose spandex it's got pretty good weight to it um, it's got a drier hand, if that makes sense. It doesn't feel, feel shiny or kind of slick like some rayon jerseys do. It has a little bit of a, a matte feel to it. I hope that <laughs> making sense. Um, also with Minerva, um, this is not a solid, but this I wear as a solid, and it is their um, cotton spandex stripes. So they have um, quite a few different colors of a uh, striped fabric. I love a good, you guys know that I love a good striped fabric. So the navy and white stripe, I've made, used their red and white stripe. Um, I think those are the only two colors I've made up, although I have my eye on the ochre and white stripe. One of my students had that on um, at one of my classes, and I'm like, okay, I need to add that to my... <laughs> to my uh, um, stash, I think, at some point. Uh, but it's just, it's a, a wo or knitted stripe, so you don't have to worry about things getting off grain. Um, so you can tell that it's been knitted from the, the wrong side. And um, I, yeah, I just really, really love it. It also wears really well. Um, I've used it quite a few times. Um, next up, Stretch Cotton Twill. So um, they've got a great selection. Um, I made a pair of Upland trousers in this. Um, I did just buy some stretch cotton twill from them that was a Robert Kaufman for my son, and it's nice, but their core range would have worked just as well. I think that the color I wanted when I went to do that was just on pre-order at that point, like they were out of it at the time, and I just wanted the fabric sooner. 
um, but it's a very, I mean, it's very similar. I've used both of them, and I will definitely be going back and using more of the Stretch Cotton Twill. It's just great for trousers, both men and women, um, because it's got not a ton of stretch, but enough to make it really comfortable to wear. So um, I'm a big fan of that one. Also, their cotton double gauze. I have used this for um, my daughter. I made her a McCall's top, and I made her a pair of goji shorts out of that. Was so pleased with that and how well that um, worked. Because a lot of these fabrics, not all are created equal, right? Like, I've used a lot of double gauze that grows, and double gauze will grow, but, like, really grows or that's really shifty and hard to sew with. Um, but I have been very impressed with the double gauze from that. In fact, I bought myself some in cream. Didn't get around to doing a sew the look for it because um, I was gonna make myself a pair of woven joggers and a white button up. That'll be coming up in the spring though because that's I'm that's earmarked for that. <laughs> I just didn't get around to sewing it. But it is a beautiful quality, quality of double gauze. Um, okay, their cotton fleece back sweatshirting. I made my red Stanton in this and it is very nice quality. So it's a cotton spandex. It's got nice stretch. Um, real nice and soft. The jersey just feels really good on the right side. Uh, and I've been wearing my little hoodie a ton and it is not pilling or showing any kind of wear and tear. It's lovely. And um, I'm pairing that with their tubular ri ribbing. All of this is their um, core range, their core range tubular ribbing. Um, this is what I used for mine. I don't think they have the red in stock anymore, but they do have a lot of great neutrals. So these don't necessarily match perfectly, but if you're wanting to use, um, you know, and I am gonna talk about some matching uh, French terry and sweatshirting that have matching ribbing. But for this one, I was impressed with the tubular ribbing. And if you're using something more of a neutral color, it's great for um, cuffs, collars, bands, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's really, it's really nice. Um, okay, I've got two Ponties to talk about. Now, the Minerva Ponties are a viscose poly polyester spandex blend. Um, and I shy away from a lot of the polyester and the Ponties because those really can pill. But if the viscose or rayon content is high enough, you don't get that, you don't have that issue. I have used both of these for different projects and I have not had it, that issue at all with these. Um, so this, the polyester is replacing the nylon. Normally my and I do still like, like a rayon nylon spandex blend. Um, so the polyester is just replacing the nylon in this blend. And I, I find it to be breathable. The viscose makes it nice and breathable so you don't get that hot like sauna suit <laughs> with polyester. But for more of your dress weight, because Ponty does come in different weights, more of the dress weight Ponty, um, I like their stable Ponty knit. Um, and actually, I had a couple of things that I've made out of this and a while ago, and I just don't have them in my wardrobe anymore. And I, do, I honestly, I looked for them and I, I did not take pictures with them because it was something I was doing for Minerva. <laughs> um, but I think actually you're gonna be seeing here soon. Um, more to come on that, but um, I don't have pictures of it, so you're just gonna take my word for it. But their stable Ponty is lovely, comes in a ton of colors, so it's a good like dress weight um, if you wanted to make like a sweater, a cardigan, that sort of thing. You could do pants out of it, I just wouldn't do maybe the more fitted pants. But if you're wanting a heavier Ponty for say um, the, you know, and I think you could you could do a like a Metro blazer or a blazer out of the dress weight Ponty. Um, it would just have a little bit more drape. But if you wanted something a little more structured, the heavier weight Ponty would be perfect. And this is the um, stuff that I used for my red dress, which is thicker. My red dress is thicker, my Wanderlust that I have. Um, and I've made a Metro blazer out of that as well. Um, but it would be great for pants, like more fitted, like the Parker Ponty pants maybe. And then finally with Minerva, we're gonna talk about acetate lining. Okay, um, I get asked about lining all the time. Um, my favorite linings are ones that have a rayon base. Acetate, while it's, it's rayon, <laughs> it's the same base. Um, so wood pulp often is what is the, the beginning stages of what rayon and viscose start at and then they go through a process to become a fiber and then they come viscose rayon. Acetate, the same type of thing, the same beginning product, goes through a different, different, a little bit different um, chemical process to make the acetate. Um, so acetate's more breathable, it's less uh, staticky, and then like a polyester, and it's yeah, it's my go-to for um, jacket linings. Um, yeah, any kind of, like, I don't really line my skirts or dresses very often. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit more, but definitely if I want a, it to be slicked, like for jackets and coats, um, to really, to 
be able to move easier. That is my go-to. All right, oh, excuse me. Next is StyleMaker Fabrics. And I've got some overlap with StyleMaker with Minerva, but again, Minerva and StyleMaker are probably the two that I shop from the most, um, just because I can find what I need. Um, so that's, you know, there you go. <laughs> And I actually have some samples of some of the core, not all of them, but some of the core from StyleMaker because I was sent the bundle when they did their fall fashion tour. She sent me the bundle of all of the um, samples that went that you could buy uh, of that new release. And some of her staples were in that bundle. So I went through and picked them out, the ones that were in that bundle. So I can kind of show you guys a little bit better. All right, cotton spandex jersey, which is right here. It's lovely. It's very comparable to the Minerva. So really, this just kind of depends on where I'm shopping and, you know, what makes the most sense. It just has nice body. It washes well, wears well. I've used this a ton, you know, just as much as the Minerva. So this one's really, really great. Um, their Cotton Model Spandex. Also lovely. So this is the difference. So the Cotton Modal is very lovely for t-shirts because it has just a little bit more drape and I'll show you. So this is the Cotton Modal over here and this is just the Cotton Spandex. So you see how this one just falls in on itself a little bit more? So it's got a little bit of drape, We, but not so much. I feel like when I make <laughs> t-shirts out of like a viscose uh, spandex, like a regular, just a standard t-shirt or a rayon spandex, that it feels like as the day goes on, like it's melting off my body just because it kind of, it grows. I feel the same way about bamboo, although bamboo is great for sleeping in because it does wick lovely, um, keeps you nice and cool. But I just don't like the way that those wear unless it's a type of dr dress or shirt that I want that effect, um, which does happen. Um, so I kind of like the Modal. It's kind of a good mix between um, the cotton spandex and um, a jersey or a, oh my gosh, and a, or a rayon jersey. <laughs> so this one is, um, is really lovely. Okay, what else we got here? Um, okay, their bam her bamboo cotton sweatshirting. Um, I don't have any of that here with me, but she has, it's lovely. Well, I do. Oh, it's actually gonna be the, um, sweater that I'm making for my daughter on Sunday. I don't have it right here with me. It's being worked on. <laughs> um, but you can buy matching ribbing, uh, bamboo cotton ribbing to go with your bamboo cotton sweatshirting. And she's got quite a few different colors. So I would say the main difference between the bamboo cotton, it's similar to the difference between the cotton modal jersey and the cotton spandex jersey. This also has spandex in it, but um, just that it, it holds its shape better than a rayon spandex, but it does still have a little bit of drape. I kind of like this for sweatshirts because it then, um, I mean, this is all cotton. The Stantons that I've made are cotton spandex, but I do kind of like that sometimes for some, for sweatshirts that are going to be a little bit more oversized on me, um, just because it, it, it doesn't make me look bulkier than I need to look, if that makes sense. Um, but she's got a ton of colors. It's fantastic with the matching bamboo cotton ribbing, which is huge. She also carries a classic cotton sweatshirting, which has a little bit less stretch in it, but it's got the fleece on the back, um, beautiful colors as well. Um, she does, well, I take that back. She also has some cotton ribbing that she sells, and I think that those might go together as well. So her classic cotton sweatshirting and also some ribbing that matches that um, as well. Then with her Ponties. I would say more times than not, I, I shop Ponty from StyleMaker. Um, most of my Ponty projects come from StyleMaker. And I loved getting this package because she carries two different kinds. She has her classic Ponty. Um, this is the classic Ponty. And then she also has the, um, what's it called? The Ari Ar Arietta Ponty. And I just want to show you guys the difference. I would say that the classic Ponty is more of your dress weight Ponty. So both of these come in quite a few colors. So this one you could do um, cardigans out of, dresses, um, sweatshirts, that kind of thing. But if I were doing a Metro blazer or a pair of like Parker Ponty pants or something where I wanted a little more heft, I would use this Arietta Ponty. Again, it comes in some great neutral colors and um, it's lovely. In fact, I'm, getting, I'm gonna be doing a sew along for the Parker Ponties and I'm gonna use this fabric. Although I have used the, actually the past two Parker Ponties I made, I used the Minerva fabric because I was just on there ordering other stuff anyway and for my mom and sister and it worked great. So um, they both are in love with those. So, you know. Um, okay, cotton shirting from StyleMaker. This is what I have made my classic white classic shirt out of and my daughter's 
uh, well, my cream classic shirt and my daughter's white classic shirt have been made out of her um, premium cotton shirting. It's great. It's 44 or 43 inches wide, so you do need a little bit of extra, but it washes well, wears well, comes in a ton of different colors. So if you're doing a shirt for man, woman, whatever, it is great. It has a lot of body. It's perfect for a tailored button-up shirt. Also with linings, she carries a whole bunch of Rayon Batiste. I have used this before. The Rayon Batiste is nice um, because this is what I would use maybe for a dress. If I were lining a dress um, that had a, especially like a, a Rayon dress of some sort, a chalet or Rayon twill dress, because it's just a little bit more, it's breathable because Rayon is a natural product that's gone through a man-made process, but it is more breathable, So, um, but real lightweight, so it wears really, really well. Um, I also like cotton lawn really well. Um, I didn't put that on here anywhere because uh, honestly, I was just grabbing inexpensive cotton lawn from fabric.com, but fabric.com is no more. So <laughs> stay tuned. I'll fill you in when I find a good source for uh, cotton lawn. Um, and that may end up being Minerva. Um, I just haven't used any of their plain cotton lawn yet. So stay tuned. Didn't want to recommend that without using it. All right, next, uh, corduroys. So her, oh, I have some of that. I didn't bring it over. Okay, so she's got two corduroys that are great, come in a whole bunch of different colors. She has just a uh, rigid cotton corduroy that comes in a ton of different colors. This is what I have used for my um, upland trousers that I made. Uh, when was that? Last maybe early this, like earlier this year in winter. Um, I love those. I love those trousers so much, but that came from um, Style Maker. That was her uh, rigid ponte, or ponte, her rigid uh, corduroy. But she also sells a stretch corduroy that's also really lovely. So for instance, if you were wanting to do the new Love Notions Legato jeans, you could make them in a corduroy and I would choose this stretch corduroy. Comes in a whole different colors. Um, it's just a great staple. Uh, also, tinsel twill. She has some beautiful, oh, I didn't grab one of that either. Some beautiful um, colors of her tinsel twill. I love this. I've made woven joggers out of this. I've made my most recent, um, oh, what was the name of that? The Avril jacket from Fiber Mood was in her tinsel twill. So it's lovely for a pair. I mean, you could do a dress out of it, more flowy pants. I did a woven jogger in it. They're very comfortable to wear. It softens as you wash it, um, just washes up beautifully. So yeah, like a wide, the wide leg trousers that are super in right now would be gorgeous in a tinsel twill. You get such beautiful drape um, out of something like that. So, and again, she's got that in a few different colors. Um, I'll come back to denim here in just a second. All right, she's got a couple of sweater knits. I get asked all the time, things to make cardigans out of. She has two really great sweater knits. So she's got, first of all, this double sweater knit that comes in, it's a staple, so she's got it. Um, it's two-sided, so I showed you guys this. It's like ribbed on one side, I don't know if that's gonna show up, and then like uh, brushed fleece almost on the other side. So this one's a little bit thicker. I would do, um, definitely do cardigans, or like a sweater dress would be beautiful in this fabric. And then she also has this um, luxury soft sweater knit that has more uh, rayon in it, so it's much drapier, as you can see. So I mean, you could do a dress out of this. I would just do something that needed a lot of drape. So this one is, is definitely more bodied than this one, um, but either of them would you know be great for a cardigan. Again, this would be perfect for a sweater dress. If you wanted to do, you know, the um, sweater pants are in right now, you know, like a lounge pant, this would be perfect for like a, a lounge pant. You could do like the resolution joggers in it, um, but maybe do the yoga leg, like the flared legs that are um, also really in right now. And you could do like a matching sweatshirt in that. Um, they're just both very, very soft. This would just be beautiful. Anything that you wanted more drape out of, beautiful. Both come in multiple colors. Um, and then almost finally, the um, boiled wool. So boiled wool is a lot of fun. It has some mechanical stretch, so you can get um, a little bit, probably, oh, I don't know, about 20% maybe. Um, so, you know, a lot of the, uh, I think you could do a Metro Blazer in this. Um, it does have the uh, stretch that you need for that. Um, it's just that you don't, I wouldn't line, you can't line it because the lining would negate the stretch factor, but there's a lot of different oversized coats or like coatigans that are beautiful with the boiled wool and she has a ton of these. You could also do this for pants um, and you could line your pants. Boiled wool is, um, it's been felted. So it is not like this most smooth thing, but the texture in it is just gorgeous. So um, you could also do a woven blazer. You could do like the um, cashmere auburn blazer would be beautiful. 
or the Closet Core Jessica Blazer would be wonderful. Um, any of those. Uh, it just has some really beautiful texture. I was watching the Today Show this morning and the gal, they had a gal on there doing, um, you know, showing off some products or whatever. And she had on this bright yellow blazer that had texture and it looked like a boiled wool or a boucle over a white t-shirt with like wide leg jeans and then a pointed toe heel. She looked so good. <laughs> I walked through the room. I was like, oh my gosh, I need that outfit. So anyway, she's got a ton of colors of this boiled wool and you could be used almost as a stable knit and a woven. So if you were interested in that, she has a ton of colors. Finally, denim. I would say more times than not, I buy my denim from Style Maker Fabrics. Um, I know that Minerva has a core range of a whole bunch of denims. Honestly, I haven't made jeans in a while. So um, I think I would like to try their core range just so I could then give you a, um, an update on what, how I think about them. But I have had great success with all the denims that Style Maker has ever pulled in, both rigid and with stretch. I do get asked all the time what weight of denim I like for jeans. Personally, I like 10 to 12 ounces for jeans. Um, that's just my preference. I feel like it is thick enough that it hides things, but not so thick that you don't, you can't move in it. Um, for a shirting, I think like a five to six ounce would be a great button up shirt, like a denim button up shirt or like looser dresses. Um, and you could go with a little bit more structured when you get into like the eight ounce um, for dresses. Um, you could do maybe looser like pants. You know, if you wanted to do a, I don't know, like a wide leg pant in a denim um, where it wasn't gonna be too fitted to your body, you could probably be fine with an eight ounce. Um, but those are just my preferences. Um, you know, everyone's different, but when I'm buying um, fabric, and specifically denim, I like a 10 to 12. Um, I have used her mid-weight, which is a 10 ounce denim before. Loved it, it's made great. Uh, jeans, both for my, I've made Dawn jeans for myself and my daughter. I have made, um, what else have I made out of that? I have some in my stash right now. It's going to be overalls at some point for either myself or my daughter will arm wrestle over it. <laughs> but yeah, I like both her stretch and she carries a lot of the cone mill um, denim as well. Also, and I'll talk about that again, I do like denim from um, Blackbird Fabrics as well, but we'll talk about them last. Okay, moving on, because this is going to be a very long video. I apologize. <laughs> so the Fabric Store is another one that I love, specifically. Um, and all of these, you could find beautiful prints and that sort of thing. Um, these, are, again, are just the basics that I really, really enjoy. So fa the Fabric Store, you can a lot of times find really cool silks, really cool um, shirtings, rayons, um, and some beautiful prints. But my go-tos for them are their Merino jersey, their premium Merino, Merino jersey. It's just lovely to wear. I've talked about that because I got an order for them not too long ago on the channel. Comes in a ton of different colors. It's antimicrobial. It's wicking. It's great. Um, they have a couple of Merinos that are blended with nylon to make them a little bit more durable for active wear. Um, but if you are into natural fibers, it's a great base layer for um, winter as well as it makes great tank tops for the summer because it really does wick and works really, really well. So um, definitely their Merino jersey. Also their linen, they are, I think they're replacing their vintage finish linen with their new um, eco linen. Their linen's just gorgeous and they have a million different colors. So their vintage finish or the, or I think it's organic, organic linen, are lighter weight. So these would be more your shirts, your dresses, flowing pants, um, that sort of thing. But they also have a line of heavyweight linen um, that comes in a lot of different colors. That's better or great for more structured pants so or jackets that you're wanting to use for the linen. So um, I love both of those. Their linen is just <laughs> chef's kiss, you know. All right, now these um, last five are ones that I go to for I mean, I look at other stuff too, but I really look at um, for specific things. So first of all, June and Lou Fabrics. June and Lou is a very small little fabric store. She carries a lot of European things in her shop, but she always has the newest uh, See You at Six lines. You guys know how I feel about See You at Six. StyleMaker also carries a lot of the See You at Six as well. But she carries the See You at Six um, French Terry that I love, both the solid and the prints with the matching ribbings. So I have linked um, those, the French Terries and the matching ribbings, which makes it so easy. I mean, you're at the mercy color-wise of whatever See You at Six has um, released, but they're just so lovely to wear. They wash beautifully. It's just their prints are always gorgeous. Um, and she also carries their, um, amongst other things, but she has the CU at six uh, chalet, the viscose or rayon chalet. 
beautiful and the prints on that are also gorgeous and I've made a few things out of that as well and I have some stuff in my stash that also <laughs> and something that I recently made that you guys ooh it's actually right there someone asked me about that dress you guys can't know what that is yet though so hold your horses <laughs> I probably should have put that in the back. Okay, anyway, um, but that is a CU86 viscose um, or rayon chalet. Um, it's just beautiful, and you can just find some really beautiful prints there. Um, for athletic type fabrics, Surge Fabric, I love their, um, they have a generic suplex that's called their, I think it's called their uh, circular net. Um, I've used this for, this is the fabric that I've used for my resolution joggers that my Lululemon. So this is, yeah, generic supplex. It's called like ATY or something like that. Um, it's, it's wonderful. And I've linked that as well as their athletic, um, double brush poly. I don't use double brush poly for really anything, but I do find that it makes great leggings. <laughs> um, and the athletic double brush poly, I've made my daughter a few pairs of leggings out of that. And, uh, they've just worn and washed really, really, really easily. Okay, next, the Fabric Fairy. Fabric Fairy is my go-to um, for swimsuit fabrics. They've just got beautiful solids. I've linked the solids, but they also have wonderful prints. Everything I've bought from them have been highest quality. They also have board short fabric. So if you are wanting to make something, um, which can also be made for, um, it's, it's a microfiber, so it all could, also could be made for like skorts, sports skorts. It doesn't have stretch to it, so you'd want you know, something different for the shorts underneath and maybe the waistband. Um, but if you're making swim trunks for your, um, family or for yourself or making like swim skirts or something for yourself. Um, it's great for that kind of thing. And they've got a huge array. I also love the Fabric Fairy they for their Power Mesh. They have three colors, white, nude, and black. I've linked the, or I shouldn't say nude, nude to me, tan and black. Um, I've just linked the, new, the tan and the black here in the, the description, but they also have a white option. Um, I love that for any of the sucky in things. You know, I talk about using power mesh and pants and all that kind of thing and skirts. This is where I get my power mesh. All right, I'm trying to hurry so this video isn't so long. Metro Textiles, I love them for their silk. Again, he does not carry necessarily a, um, like staples. Um, he is in New York, obviously, Metro Textiles NYC, but um, he has got a wonderful selection, wonderful um, uh, prices on his fabrics, often is running you know, various and sundry sales. So this is where I buy my Silk Charmeuse and my Silk Crepe de Chine, um, especially in new to me colors when I can find them um, to use for linings or to make, um, I also shop in my color palette so that I can have things for like, um, you know, beautiful woven t-shirts or camisoles or that kind of thing. So he is my go-to for both Silk Charmeuse and Silk Crepe de Chine because I can always find it. Um, you know, the colors will vary, but I just keep my eyes peeled for that. And he's got a beautiful array of other things as well, but mostly I go to him for the silk. And then finally, Blackbird Fabrics. Um, she carries a lot of the things that StyleMaker carries, and I do find her shipping takes a little bit longer from um, uh, Canada than style makers does. So that's why she's not, you know, right there with me, um, up there with style maker, but she has got some beautiful, um, bottom weight fabrics. Um, her bold denim is wonderful. And also I've had really good luck with her denims. So basically anything for bottom, you know, in that bold denim, which I think the bold denim is actually 9.5 ounce, but I have made pants out of that. Um, and my doc, my daughter's, uh, Fouge, maybe it's 10 ounce. No, I can't remember my daughter's Fouge, her little, um, crop jacket, as well as the matching, um, Jeanne, uh, shorts that I made for her, those deer and doe patterns. That was all that bull denim comes in a whole bunch of different colors. Um, and again, just her regular denim. She just brings in some really beautiful things. Um, and she's got a lot of other stuff as well. Some, she does have staples. So, um, all of, I would just trust any of her things as well. So for more one-stop shop. So there you have it. Those are the eight fabric stores I shop from the most. I would love to hear if there are some fabric stores that you shop from that you love that I didn't list because I am always up. I did, putting this list together was really hard for me, guys, because I wanted to shop at every one of these as I was pulling these links. So you're welcome for this sacrifice that I have made. It was very hard. I didn't buy anything. So I, I think I need a, a pat on the back for that. Um, but yeah, let me know the ones that you like and that you watch or watch or frequent as you're going through. I would love to hear what those are. All right, that's all I've got for today. Um, how many of you are joining me in Aronica Cole's projector class tomorrow? I am so excited about this. I am putting a projector on my Christmas list. I cannot wait. I have a whole bunch of sewing I'm doing right now that re required me to print out and tape together some patterns or 
which I'm just choosing to do instead of sending them off for copy shop just because of time constraints, although that comes pretty quick. But I'm so excited to learn the projector so that I can do away with all of that. Anyway, I, you can still sign up. I've got a link down below if you want to join me tomorrow, 10 to 1130 Eastern Time. Um, she's doing a live projector class and I paid for it with my own money and I'm so excited about that. So if you want to join me in that class, I do have a link for that down below. Also, the fabric store that I mentioned, I forgot to say, I do have, they've given me a code for um, my viewers, which is 10% off anything that's regularly priced, um, and that's Tomcat10. So um, I will leave that uh, linked, that will be in the description box down below. But if you want the links to all the various and sundry fabrics, definitely sign up for the newsletter. That is also linked down below um, so that you don't miss that PDF. Okay, I've talked a lot. <laughs> I think that's all I've got. I will be back on Sunday with my first Arlington hack and I'll be adding the uh, men's dockside polo collar to the cropped Arlington sweater for my daughter. So that will be Sunday's video. All right guys, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. It's gonna be really cold here. Winter is hitting with a vengeance. Um, I hope you get some sewing in. It's gonna be perfect sewing weather here. So hopefully I can get a lot of sewing in as well. All right guys, I will see you again on Sunday. Bye.